Thank you for joining me today. I'm in the book of First Peter. I hope that this, uh, this First Peter passage will be a source of great encouragement to you. I'll be honest with you, I didn't understand it for many years while I was in ministry, but uh, at one point in ministry, I was uh, just moved by, uh, I believe, by the Lord to uh, memorize a portion of First Peter. Uh, originally, I think I had the idea that I was going to memorize the whole thing, uh, and I got through most of the first chapter, if not all of the first chapter, but uh, never completed that. But nonetheless, as I was memorizing that, I, it enabled me to meditate on that particular passage. And I came across this passage that I had never fully grasped or understood prior to that. But listen to what uh, what Peter says in verses 10 and 11, specifically in verse 11. He says, Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace that was to be yours searched and inquired carefully, inquiring what person or time the Spirit of Christ in them was indicating when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glories. Now, what Peter is saying there is that these prophets of old who spoke about the coming Messiah, people like Isaiah or Jeremiah or, uh, or, or any of the other prophets, Micah had specific prophecies about Messiah. <coughs> Excuse me. And each one of these was, uh, was given um, a spirit by which they began to wonder, who is this that's coming? Now, it's very interesting to me at this, jun at this juncture of my life that, that the prophets are looking for a person because there are many in, in uh, Jewish theology, for instance, who recognize only the Old Testament, who don't believe that Messiah is going to come in person. And maybe that's because they have rejected Jesus as the Messiah. But, uh, but whatever that reason is, they don't recognize that he's coming as a person. And yet, this particular passage reminds us that he is coming. Actually, he has come in the person of Jesus, the Messiah. Now, now, when Isaiah was writing, and I, a lot of times when I'm reading this passage, the passage in Isaiah 53, where he was wounded for our transgressions and he, was carried, by, uh, he carried our iniquities, and, and that whole passage of Isaiah 53 comes to mind because Peter specifically mentions that they saw the prophets that way saw the sufferings of Christ, and that's what's described here in, in Isaiah 53. But they wondered, when is it going to happen? What's the timing of all of this? How is this going to be fulfilled? And that's what was going through Isaiah's mind, even as he was writing those passages. He was not talking about ancient, uh, the ancient Jewish people as it's interpreted by people who reject Messiah Jesus. But he was talking about the Messiah who was going to come and was going to suffer for the sins of his people. And that's what Peter was saying uh, Isaiah and these other prophets were wondering about and inquiring about. And, and there was something about these prophecies that piqued their curiosity and their interest, and they wondered about them, and they, they meditated on them, and they, they thought deeply about them. Somehow they knew that this was a word from the Lord, and they, were, and they gave that, and then they came back, and they thought, how is this going to happen? And certainly they didn't understand all the details. Certainly, they, didn't, they couldn't predict that he was going to be born of a virgin in Bethlehem and that the whole Roman world was going to uh, actually facilitate all of that. They had no clue except that they knew that somehow there was a person and that there was going to come a point in time when Messiah would come. And that's what they trusted in. In the book of Hebrews, it says in chapter 11 that those great saints 
are, are not able to fully uh, experience the joy of, uh, of heaven until we get there and until we complete that. And that's what's happening with the, with the prophets here. They, they, they know there's something else. They know that this is a prophecy about the future, but they don't understand all of its details. You and I, looking back on history, can ascertain most of those details. Yeah, we, we live in a day of, uh, of great deceitfulness and, and all of that, but the good news is that we can look back. We have the complete revelation, as complete as it will be on this side of eternity, and we can look back and we can see that Messiah indeed did come, and he is called Jesus. Father, we thank you that Messiah did come. We thank you for the promise that you made all the way back in the Garden of Eden, and that you have reiterated that again and again and again and again, and we probably couldn't even list the number of times that your Holy Spirit was implying that Messiah was coming in the scriptures. But we thank you that he came, and we thank you that you've allowed us to put our trust in him. Because as John says, if we believe that Jesus is the Messiah, we have life in his name. Grant to us that life and give us great joy in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day.